Love. Such a simple thing. Loving others, a hard thing to do. Welcome to the 3D Disciples Podcast, where we're working together to develop disciples who display God's love as we deploy into God's world. Join us on this journey by liking, subscribing, and following this channel. I'm your host, Hannah, and alongside us is the pastor of FBC Clarion, Jason Hunter. May Jesus help us climb to new heights. Dear friends, let us love one another because love is from God, and everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God because God is love. I've always kind of thought there's something odd about that verse because who doesn't know what love is? Like, it kind of seems like an oxymoron. Like, don't you think so? Like, what does that really mean by, like, whoever doesn't love doesn't know God? Like, everyone loves someone or something. So is that... Yeah, know. but do they love them like God loves us? No. And so... Yeah. I actually, I think the word there, I think it, that's the place where agape is used quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And, and and that's a special word of love. Oh. And, that's and right. so Greek it's, has three, it's, it's, three or four. Yeah. And okay. there's four. There's only three of them mentioned in the Bible, mm. uh, I believe. <laughs> now you got me doubting myself. Yeah. Um, but anyway, that we use the word love from everything from a cheeseburger to our wife, right. our spouse, husband, right. our dog, our football, favorite football team, favorite sport, favorite color. Which I think is how Randy opened up the brotherly love sermon. Yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it, and it's, it's a pretty wide um, kind of idea. Mm. Um, but if we, if, if the way God loves us and that was displayed through Jesus is our standard for loving others, Mm -hmm. then we may not love them Mm -hmm. with that true, with the true word. God. So I was missing something. It's the fact that our love word doesn't match up with the love that they were describing in that. Just completely self-sacrificing, expecting nothing in return for their good at our own sacrifice, no matter what. Yeah. There's very few of us that (laughs) love that way. Got it. Okay. That makes, I've always like, I don't know why that always such a strange verse to me. And that makes a lot more sense when you go back to the original language. Because I would say even the people that are closest to you in your life, you may struggle to love completely selflessly, Mm -hmm. completely sacrificially, you know, Yeah, I was going to ask this question later, but I was going to ask it. I'll just ask it now with that is like, will I ever master like loving others? Or is that just something we're just going to have to work on? Master or (laughs) grow in? Yeah. Yeah. I I I think we I think we grow in love, um, Mm -hmm. especially as as Christians, as disciples, as people who are developing as disciples. That's part of the work of the Holy Spirit working in us. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I definitely, just for me personally, I love, you know, Shelly, I love my kids better than I did 20 years ago, Mm -hmm. differently, more sacrificially, more selflessly, Mm -hmm. um, more patiently. Um, I love people, I love church members better than I did 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, more forgiving than I was then, which is part of love, Um, you know, more willing to be wrong or take it on the chin or not have to be justified and, or, or prove myself right, you know, mm-hmm. and, or, or defend myself or, or a whole lot of things. So I, I think we grow in love mm-hmm. uh, more and more and more. Um, and so I, I trust that that's part of the developing as a disciple part of it. Yeah, I mean, as you were describing all that, again, it reminded me, I think I've brought it up in so many podcast episodes, but that one book review we did, Chasing Infinity, like you're infinitely chasing mm-hmm. this kind of love that Jesus had and his is infinite. So yeah, you're never going to master it because you're trying to be like him or, you know, and, um, and that was the other question I had too was, can we have a manual about how to love? Cause <laughs> I feel like there could be a whole textbook. I mean, just well, writing. And, 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 but you do already. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think much of what we learn as disciples, mm-hmm. I mean, basically, I mean, if you want to try to, you know, condense it down to the condensed version, Mm -hmm. what are we doing? We're learning how to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind and others as ourselves. Right. I mean, that is the call of discipleship. So 
Yeah. If the whole manual is if that. You're, yeah. If you're learning how to do the things that disciples do, mm-hmm. then you're learning how to be more loving. Mm-hmm. And, you know. That's true. I mean, that we like that was his Jesus's main call, and he says, "Make disciples." I like it. Um, so we're coming up on the holiday season okay. in real time of us recording this. Um, so kind of caught in the middle between family members who struggle to love each other. Mm. <laughs> I think mm. I think a lot of people can relate to that. Um, and you had explained in the sermon a lot. Your whole love for others came from Colossians three. And 3.12 said, um, if we have heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, forbearance, and patience, that we would, and you described that we would kind of receive the benefits of of doing things God's way. And one of these benefits was peace and unity. So I guess where my question comes from, how can we have peace and unity with between our family if we're trying to love them, but they're not trying to love each other? Like. Well, again, there you goes your self denial. There goes, and so, so one of the most loving things you can do is have no expectations of people. Mm. I mean, you know, like when we love somebody, when we do good things for them, we don't expect, we don't respect, expect in kind. Mm-hmm. You know, like a quid pro quo. Like I'm going to love you and treat you nice. Now you're going to treat me nice. Mm-hmm. No, I'm not that. I don't have that expectation. I'm going to love you and treat you nice. You're going to treat me bad, and I'm going to respond with more love and niceness to you. Mm. That's the kind of love that God loves us with. So there's agape love right mm-hmm. there, right? That that no matter how many times we've rejected Christ, no matter how many times we've disappointed Christ, when we've sinned, failed, whatever that, you know, Mm -hmm. rejected him ignored him rebelled against him denied him i mean think about peter peter denies him and he just keeps on loving him and keeps on loving him and coming back to him you know and so and so our peace and unity with other people shouldn't depend on them reacting the way we want them to Mm. that i can because it says as far as it is as possible to you up to you Mm -hmm. live at peace with others and so Again, like Jesus, and like he teaches us, when they strike us on the cheek, we turn the other one. Mm-hmm. And that can be a verbal strike or a attitude strike or a, they roll their eyes strike or they just yeah. ignore you strike. And like, okay, I can turn the cheek on that and, and, and continue to love you whether you respond to that the way I want you mm-hmm. to or not. And that, I think that's really the challenge because that's what Christ did. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to like picture my holiday dinner now and doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be fun. Yeah, that'll be a challenge, huh? Yeah, it will. And then, But that's, I mean, again, the beautiful thing about this 3D journey is to me, it's helping me realize where all my shortcomings are. And I have a lot. But <laughs> well, that's, 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 don't feel like the Lone Ranger there. Yeah. Um. I guess we'll get into this. You also said something in your sermon that goes like this. We've got to build a unity of spirit before we build a unity of action. What did you mean by that? Um, So that comes from that thought um, was kind of a a theme that comes from my therapeutic wilderness camping days. Mm -hmm. So uh, I work with, I I lived in the woods with 10 delinquent boys um, and they were, delinquents. I mean, <laughs> with everything that you can think about, I mean, they'd been kicked out of every school, every program, mm-hmm. the world had given up on them. Mm-hmm. A lot of them were adjudicated. Um, they had more, they had longer records and more diagnoses than, you know, anything. Mm-hmm. And so we lived in the woods together and our, our survival depended on us all working together. And so we would do amazing trips. We would I canoe down the Suwannee River for 230 miles over 30 days. I canoed the Susquehanna here in Pennsylvania, 165 miles in 15 days. I hiked 100 miles on Appalachian Trail. I got to do some amazing things. Mm-hmm. Um, but when we talked about it in our group, we had this question, and we would say, are we in spirit with one another? And what mm-hmm. that meant, are, are we all on the same page together? Are we all trying to accomplish the same things? Do we all have the same goals? Do we all want to reach the same destination? Mm-hmm. You know, and, 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 and we, would, we would talk about the spirit of our group quite often. And, and, and so like sometimes when things were going wrong, 
I, mean, I would just ask, are, are we in spirit with one another? Mm-hmm. Meaning, like, are we on the same page? Or, or are we good? Is is there peace between us? Are you mad at me? Do you think I'm mad at you? You know, are you trying to do your own thing? Are you are you part of the group? You know, are mm-hmm. we is, is our spirits matching up? That internal part of what we're aiming for, what we're trying to accomplish. Mm-hmm. Because when we were in spirit with each other, we could go and do these things. Mm-hmm. We could canoe. 165 miles in 15 days we could hike 100 miles we could live on the side of a of a lake in the blue ridge parkway in february when it was negative degrees and and survive in a teepee for two three weeks at a time right. we could do there there's nothing our group couldn't accomplish when we were in spirit together mm-hmm. when we were, weren't in spirit with one another and everybody's kind of got their own agenda Mm -hmm. and or there's like well i'm holding a grudge against this guy or i'm mad at the leader you know and he won't he won't pay attention to me or he won't do what i think should be done and we're out of spirit with one another we couldn't make it to a meal Mm -hmm. (laughs) we couldn't walk we couldn't walk 200 miles 200 yards up a trail right to the dining hall that's what i was thinking when you were like 200 miles here 130 miles here and i'm like oh if you're all going different directions that's going to be long 200 miles and and there were literally i mean literally this is a literal statement there were times we would miss meals we would miss breakfast or we would miss Mm -hmm. lunch because we, we had a task to do, mm-hmm. but we weren't in spirit with one another. Mm-hmm. People like, oh, I don't want to do this task, and I want to I don't want to do my part, and I mm-hmm. want to gripe and complain, and I, I want to whatever. I want to be mad right now or whatever. Mm-hmm. And instead of focusing on the group and say, let's all get together, we got a 200-yard walk you know, up this trail and go have lunch. Mm-hmm. And we couldn't get ourselves together enough. Mm-hmm. And so we'd have to sit down and like, why are we out of spirit? What's What's... Who's mad? What's going on? Is there some undercurrent? Is there people sowing dissension or people talking bad about one another? I mean, and so, mm-hmm. and so I learned through that that when a group of people are in spirit with one another, when they've got the same goals, the same desires, the same focus, there's nothing they can't do. Mm-hmm. I mean, I took nine-year-olds, nine- and 10-year-olds, canoed 200 and some miles on the Suwannee River over 30 days. I mean, these are little kids, mm-hmm. and they camped every night, and they pitched their tents every night, and they cooked their food every meal, and mm-hmm. they canoed and did did everything. They packed them up every morning. I mean, there was nobody there doing it but them, mm-hmm. and they could do it. Mm-hmm. Did that get better as the miles went on and on? like, Or did you all constantly have to you're read con- you're constantly <laughs> are we in spirit with one another yeah. because, because and that's the thing about spirit i mean it can change quickly i mean you could you could go for a week and the spirit be good in your group and you're you're knocking out miles and you're having great adventures and you're catching fish and we're getting to go swimming and everybody's happy and something happens mm. and somebody gets out of spirit with the group mm. and the next day after a week of that you you're not on the river on time. You, you're, there's all kind of chaos while we're paddling. People are yelling at each other. And you're like, what happened? Mm-hmm. We're all of a sudden out of spirit with each other. And we can't do basic. We couldn't put the tent up today. We're having arguments just trying to do yeah. the basic everyday things that we've done thousands of times. Mm-hmm. But today it's like, oh, we, we can't get our tent up today. We can't, we can't pack our sleeping bags up. What's, what's going on? That makes so much more sense. Not much more sense, but it, it alivens this image of why you considered unity one of the big three. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't, like, like you can see what you can accomplish versus what you can't when you're not unified. Right. And that makes so and much so sense. And so if, if, you're, if you're not unified in spirit, mm-hmm. then, then your actions are going to be they're going to be subpar. They're probably going to be all over the place and they're going to be three times as hard to try to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And that's why, so we have to make sure we build a unity of spirit. So everybody's kind of got to buy in and it's like, yep, I'm I'm part of this. Mm -hmm. I belong, you know, back to the body, right? I, I have a place in this body. Maybe that's where that quote came from. (laughs) You know, and and, and I, and I I, I have a purpose and a part and I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm ready to do mine and move this thing forward. Mm -hmm. And, and once you got to, that's the harder thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, living outdoors and doing all the adventures we did, everybody thinks that's the hard part. That was easy. Mm-hmm. 
learning how to sense the spirit of your group, Mm -hmm. learning how to talk about the spirit of your group, learning how to evaluate the spirit of your group, learning how to, how to build spirit. We would often talk about how do we build spirit? You know, like we have accomplishments. We, we encourage one another that, that, that was the work. And if, if a counselor could figure out how to do that, there was nothing his group couldn't do. That's so cool. And and the this episode comes from like Love for Others, which is just to just give people an idea in the manual here. We're talking about chapter five, living unified. And within unity, you describe Christ's body, love for others, enemy relationships, which I'm guessing you probably hit on with your kids, um, peacemakers, and allowance. But um, just to get the overall view of where, where yeah. this conversation is coming from. Um, I'm sorry. If you want to say anything no, more no, about that's, that, no, that's that's just that's just it. Yeah, and so so working with my kids, they were a microcosm of working with any group, mm-hmm. and 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 like I just remember one of my mentors when I when I left the the therapeutic wilderness camp kind of environment to be a pastor, he's like, your group work, learning how to to work with a group, mm-hmm. he's like that's all you're doing. You just got a bigger group now. Mm -hmm. I was thinking as you were telling that too, that this is really translated into the church. The 3d manual has put us all in the same unity of spirit. Um, I'm I'm sure there's lots of other things that you all have been doing to try and get people on the same page so that we can accomplish the same action together. Um, There's another point you also brought up in the second part of your love for others. There's actually two sermons in this is you managed to create five viewpoints of love, even though we were talking earlier that it's infinite, but somehow you managed to summarize it to five, um, <laughs> <laughs> that it's, it's deeper than an emotion. So I'll just name those out. One, it's love is a motivation. Two, love is an attitude. Three, love is an action. Four, love as a challenge. And five, love as a danger. Um, listeners, if you want to know more about that, I highly recommend you listen to the 8th of October, 2023 episode or sermon. Um, but I wanted to ask Jason, can you provide an example of when you've seen or given love in one of these ways? Um, well, I think, well, the, yeah, love, the one that may sound strange when you read, read them off is love is, a re, you know, love as a danger, danger. Yeah. you know, it and, 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 that's just something we have to be real about is if you're going to really love somebody, mm-hmm. there's no way to protect yourself, mm-hmm. y- you know, and, and it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like, uh, I've done some marriage counseling and, and people, um, they'll talk either about prenuptials or they'll, they'll say, well, well you know, especially uh, uh, marrying well, most of the time, people are adults now that have their separate bank accounts, and and so part of my counseling is always, so what are you going to do with your finances? Mm-hmm. And like, well, she's going to pay for the water bill and the electric bill. I'm going to pay for the mortgage and the car mm-hmm. out of my bank account, and they're going to they're going to do. This. So I'm like, so you're not merging your bank accounts? Mm-hmm. And quite often it's like, no, we're going to do that just in case it doesn't work out. And I'm like, Why are you getting married? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's kind of the point, right? Yeah. And like, so like you you if you're gonna get married and love someone, you can't yeah. keep safety nets. Yeah. You you've got to be all in, or you're not in at all. Mm-hmm. And and so love that that loving people, especially the way God is, is is dangerous. Like mm-hmm. you have to face that this that I can get rejected. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and I've talked with a lot of people over the years, and, and that happens in church. Church hurts people. Uh, people get hurt in churches. Mm-hmm. That that happens. Um, we've probably all experienced that at some point. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I think sometimes when we get hurt in a church, it may cut even a little bit deeper because we may let our guards down further Mm -hmm. or we trust a little bit more or we have higher expectations of other Christians. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so that's, you know, we've seen that I've seen that happen. I've had it happen to me, my family. Mm -hmm. I've probably hurt people in church, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I hope if I ever have, I would apologize (laughs) or get a chance to ask for forgiveness uh, for that. Um, so the love relationships that we build in this place, there is a danger with them, mm-hmm. but but there's also a great reward with it when we do that too. And so I think mm-hmm. acknowledging that is part of it. You know, um, you know, love is our motivation. That's what drives us to do what we want to do. 
Um, love as an attitude is just a simple, like, I'm just going to love no matter what. Mm -hmm. This is just a part of who I am. Um, you know, love as an action is just really doing whatever it takes. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think the rejection part is the part that most people would like, wait a second. Mm. Love's a good thing. Yeah. It yeah. is. I mean, that that whole series or the two sermons together made me realize that, you know, I, maybe I'm using the wrong Greek word for love. Maybe <laughs> I'm, like I'm just using the one where it's like, oh, I just I like you. You know, I like a cheeseburger. Yeah. And it's when you put it on this platform, you realize how large it is. And, you know, bringing it back to the unity, we see how what impact it can have on what we can actually achieve as believers in this world that he's put us in. So, yeah, I, I mean, you know, I think about where after Jesus is after Peter's denial, Jesus comes back to Peter at the end of the story and he go, he asked him three times, do you love me? Mm -hmm. And he goes, you know, I do. And then he goes, feed my sheep if you love me. And so it's interesting that, that he, that Jesus gives Peter this chance mm -hmm. to respond to mm -hmm. him three times, kind of making up for the three denials. Like he gets the same chance to say, yes, I love you. Yes, mm -hmm. I love you. Yes, I love you. Kind of restores But it him. switches like every time how Jesus says, well, then do this. It's yeah. like it's an action. It's this. Yeah. It's that. And so it's just this yeah. whole idea of loving God and loving others. But it's this, this again, the the what God means when he asks, if you love me, you know, and now go love others mm -hmm. is is much higher and much more sacrificial than we probably generally think. Mm -hmm. And um, and so that's why. And but this is who God is. And that's why loving others, really loving, and accepting, sacrificing a personal loss with no expectation in return. Mm -hmm. You know, that that is a different kind of love. And and that's why God wants to uh, he says he wants to live through us to do that in this world mm -hmm. and so and it, i know i've said this i think in the last one is so learning how to love people who are very different in a, in a body is sets us up to now go out into the world to love people who may be even harder to love that way um outside the walls of the church mm-hmm Thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast. Our prayer is that you've heard something today that will help you be a better disciple of Jesus Christ. We also want to encourage you to make sure you take your next step in your discipleship journey by considering what it is you would do about what you heard today and then go and do it. Finally, we want to invite you to join us at 1030 on Sundays, either at our Main Street campus in downtown Clarion between Dunkin' Donuts and McDonald's or online at fbcclarion.com. God bless.